Chi Uncle Gold Podcast. Five, okay. four, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Uncle Gold Podcast. My name is Borna Zuber. I'm the host of the show. And today I have a very special guest on. Uh, I was so looking forward to this podcast. Uh, his name is Jan de Jong, and uh, he's an entrepreneur. He built multiple companies already. And today we're um, lucky to have him here to share his, some of his experiences. Uh, Jan, welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you so much, Borna. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's, it's lovely to have you here. Uh, I've been following your work on LinkedIn and your posts, and from what I can see, you're putting in a great amount of uh, effort into um, not just building out your company, but also sharing kind of this entrepreneurial mindset, which I think is extremely important. And that's basically one of the main reasons why I started this podcast. I want to share as many useful information from um, a lot of different people uh, from around the world um, and get it to as many people as I can. But for everybody, that didn't follow you on, on LinkedIn so far. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do, who you are, where you're from and kind of how we got to this point? Sure, definitely. Um, I mean, first of all, being an entrepreneur to me, that is one of the most beautiful lifestyles there is. And, and I love sharing what I'm going through, let's say my, my path that I'm following uh, to get as many people possible to be enthusiastic about perhaps becoming an entrepreneur or maybe being more enthusiastic about being an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm 36 years old right now, uh, married, uh, my wife's Croatian, I'm from the Netherlands, I moved to Croatia 14 years ago, so I was 22 when I moved to Croatia. Uh, the first company that I started was uh, called M Plus Group, uh, M Plus Group, uh, it's, it's, it's a company specialized in providing contact center services. Um, Nowadays, there's more than 8,000 people employed in that company. They have a listing on the Zagreb Stock Exchange. Uh, and they're, um, I mean, they're the largest contact center service provider in the entire region today. Uh, personally, I made an exit from that company by selling my shares in 2016. Uh, after 2016, um, also because of my, let's say, non-compete that I signed off on when I sold my shares, uh, I kind of had to reinvent myself. Uh, at first, I thought by myself, okay, this is, this is going to be rather difficult because I've been working in contact center business since I was 17. So, you know, at first you think by yourself, okay, you know, do I know anything else other than being active in, in call center business? But very soon, actually, I came to realize that, that I really was an entrepreneur that just loves to build pretty and beautiful companies. Uh, and it doesn't have to be connected to the call center business uh, per se. And that's when I started with a company called Web Power Adria. And Web Power Adria became, in our region, so in Croatia and the rest of the region, uh, we became the first company to, to be specialized in email marketing and marketing automation. The uh, company has been growing ever since we started it very nicely uh, and, and even an, an, a very fast growth ever since we went into lockdown. Uh, obviously, um, more and more companies, they, they felt and they had the need to start communicating with their audiences uh, through digital channels, including email marketing. Uh, on top of that, we had a amazing buy local campaign, where basically I suggested to companies in Croatia and in this region that for every 25 companies that would switch from services like MailChimp or Campaign Monitor, uh, if they would switch to Web Power Adria, that we would actually be hiring one full-time employee in our Zagreb office. Uh, a lot of companies, they, um, they, uh, they followed up on that. And we have actually been able, therefore, to, uh, to show significant growth in the company, been able to open up two more, two more job positions. And um, yeah, ever since, uh, I've, like you said, I've, I've been very active on LinkedIn, um, you know, communicating uh, over LinkedIn what I, what I stand for, what I believe in, uh, but also to highlight that there's actually a lot of opportunities in Croatia. A lot of people are complaining. Uh, they're leaving this country or this region. Um, you know, of course, there's a lot of things that can be improved or should be better, but that's exactly where I, as an entrepreneur, also find my opportunities. And um, one of the things that I've been also known for recently, actually, is that I've been the initiator, initiator of the digital nomad visa uh, in Croatia. So one day I woke up and I wrote an open letter on LinkedIn to our prime minister, Andrei Plenkovic, in Croatia. Uh, the LinkedIn post exploded, uh, got over 300,000 views. 
And uh, very soon after that, I actually was contacted by the prime minister's office uh, who suggested that I would send an official email to him. And after that, everything just started snowballing. Uh, and, and, and now we're actually actively communicating with ministries that are now involved. So labor, finance, Ministry of Interior, health insurance, uh, pension fund, to, um, uh, to, to actively work on, on getting the visa for Croatia, for welcoming digital nomads. So that's, awesome. that's a bit of an introduction on, on, on what I've been doing here in Croatia. That's an awesome introduction, Darian. I feel like it's a really great idea and that it has so much potential there. But can you kind of describe it, how it will work in the practical sense? Well, I mean, first of all, um, you know, ever since we all had to go into lockdown, I think that more and more individuals, but also more and more companies are open to the idea of having their staff work fully remote. Uh, this was already a trend where, of course, more and more people were going to work uh, from home or from wherever they want to. And now because of COVID-19, I think that this trend has only been accelerated. Estonia was actually in June. They were the first country to announce that they were going to introduce a digital nomad visa. And they have, in the meanwhile, uh, issued the first visas and they're actually welcoming digital nomads now to come to live and work from Estonia. Uh, and, and Croatia, as, as many people might know, but Croatia is, is, is it's a great uh, destination for tourists. I mean, 20% of Croatia's GDP is coming from tourism. And now, of course, also because of COVID-19, uh, the Croatian economy has been impacted severely because of, of, of tourists not being able to come here anymore. And a couple of um, months ago, I was asked at one virtual conference if I could think of an answer on what we can do to turn Croatia into a year-round destination. And then, uh, to me, it came that, that, that we should be welcoming digital nomads. And, you know, just to, to summarize what this visa would be, it would basically regulate the fact that digital nomads who can work fully remote from wherever they want to be, uh, but they can work from Croatia, so their staying permit for up to 12 months needs to be regulated. And of course, there also needs to be uh, complete transparency and, 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 and clarity on uh, what are, for example, the tax issues. Uh, are you allowed to provide services to Croatian companies? Are you allowed to be employed by Croatian companies? Now, the answers to that are no and no. You are not allowed to work for Croatian companies, nor are you allowed to provide services to Croatian companies, but you are allowed to, uh, to stay in Croatia for up till 12 months and to do your job for foreign companies or foreign employers from here. Yeah, makes sense. I, I feel that a lot of people want to use the, you know, flexibility of doing their job from, the ideal version that everybody dreams about is doing their job from a beach, right? Where they can look at the sea, enjoy the sun and kind of do on their laptop. And it's funny, I heard a guy online say like, I wouldn't do that. Imagine getting sand on your laptop, that wouldn't be convenient. <laughs> but uh, of course, it's, it's, it's not that, it's the flexibility to have, to move to another country and to um, work for the same company that you've been working for in the previous country. Um, do you know um, for which companies it will be available? Um, is there like a list that has been put together or it, would it be like universal? Like how would that work? No, it, 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 it's not going to work in a way that uh, you as a company can apply or qualify for that. You know, this is really a visa that is issued on an individual basis. Mm -hmm. So on a person and, you know, some companies, they, they, if they would allow their staff to work fully remote and they don't have to even be in the same city or in the same country and they would allow their staff to work from anywhere in the world then those individuals, they would basically be able to apply for a visa in Estonia or Barbados or Georgia or uh, hopefully very soon in Croatia too. Uh, the goal, the objective is that we will have everything fully finalized by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that we can start welcoming the first digital nomads starting from the year 2021. Oh, that would be awesome. Yes. Uh, I, I love that you managed to uh, do that and, and just... <laughs> Starting it with an open letter and writing it like that, it, it sounds uh, really, really cool. Like, um, I would really love that uh, it goes smooth for you and um, I wish you best of luck with, with that project. I'm sure that a lot of people will use that opportunity. I think that people will actually, were actually in the past looking for something like that because they know Croatia as a tourist destination, but probably didn't have that option um, to begin with. 
but hey, uh, let, let's see uh, how 2021 plays out. Uh, things might change, right? Yes, no, we, we definitely plan to pull this one all the way through. Uh, I mean, it's not that right now there are no digital nomads in Croatia. You know, there's a lot of people that are like, let's say, freelancers that are based in Croatia and they're working from Croatia. The only problem right now is that this is all very much in the gray zone. You know, what they're doing is basically not allowed. You're allowed to come to Croatia for three months as a tourist, but you would not be allowed to work from here. And that those freelancers are doing it anyway. Uh, it's first of all, it's it's impossible to control for 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 local authorities, of course, whether people are here to work or just to 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 enjoy Croatia as a, as a as a tourism destination. Uh, but it would be really very important that we start regulating these kind of things because this is where the world is going to. And if the world is anyway going into this direction, then I would always choose to be among the first countries to do something like this, yeah, yeah. because that's when you will be able to enjoy all the free publicity that you're going to get, just like Estonia got it, just like Barbados had it. Uh, this became world news for those countries and a lot of people are reading about those countries and, and that's great publicity for those countries. And, mm -hmm. and, and I wish that for Croatia as well. All right, I have two more questions on that topic. Um, have you read any like, uh, what will be the economic impacts? Like, is there like a increase of um, like um, the GDP or things like that? And second, um, what will kind of be the process of getting that visa? Um, would it be um, like an application that you send to the government or how would it work? Okay, to, to answer your first question, um... Right now, it's very difficult to, to, to make any forecasts on that. But if you, for example, compare that with uh, an island like Bali in Indonesia, uh, it's, a, it's an island with about a population of 4 million people. So that's very similar to Croatia. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the island of Bali, at any given time, there's about 50,000 digital nomads working from there. Uh, I'm not going to say that this is going to happen right away for Croatia, but I think that over time, we could be looking at those kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. And if you're talking about what kind of an economic impact would that have on the country? Uh, so people, those digital nomads, they would be spending their time, their, their income here in Croatia for a period of anywhere between, for example, six and 12 months. So they need to rent a place, but they're also going to visit hair salons. Uh, they're going to do, um, do their nails, go to the cinema, rent a car, whatever you do when you live in, in, in a country, you're going to do. And I think that if, if I'm looking at a pessimistic number, uh, a bit on the low end, I think that we can expect that people would spend about 1,300 euros per month. That's like a 10,000 kuna per month uh, uh, per digital nomad. So if we would be able to welcome like 50,000 of them at one point of time, then we're looking at, what is it, 65 million euros uh, to be injected into the uh, Croatian economy on a monthly basis. Um, this is a significant amount of money for, for, for Croatia and everybody would basically benefit from that because that money would be spent with businesses here, but on everything that those digital nomads would be buying, there's also VAT included. Yep. So even the tax office is going to get a significant amount of, of that money. Uh, your second question was regarding how to apply for the visa. Yes. Uh, this is also all still to be seen uh, because it's all still very early age. Uh, early stage, sorry. Um, however, my recommendation would definitely be to the Croatian government that we right away started uh, applications in, 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 from, in my opinion, the only right way to do it, which is an online application. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're talking about welcoming digital nomads here. They should not be having to queue up in front of an embassy in order to do that. You know, they need to be able to apply online. And... Countries like Barbados, they are a very good example of that, of, of how it can be done. They have an amazing website where you have all the information gathered in one place and, and, and there you will be able to very easily apply for your, they call it a welcome stamp. Mm -hmm. um, I love your predictions and ideas. I also agree that it should be online 100% and that will make everything a lot easier. Um, Croatia has been known a little bit for uh, the logistics of paperwork getting done a bit slower, but um, with the rise of online, of everything being online, I think it's just going to um, make everything a lot faster and that has to be a, um, like a part of it. Um, you're from the Netherlands. Can you compare... Uh, the situation in the Netherlands and Croatia a little bit and 
what are some similarities? I'm sure you get that question a lot, but uh, just to kind of um, get the main uh, things that you noticed uh, out of the way. Um, well, I mean, first of all, I left the Netherlands, of course, when I was 22. So I, I cannot really say that I have a lot of experience in terms of business in the Netherlands. My entire business career as an entrepreneur, uh, I've, I've, I've done that in Croatia, not in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, people ask me very often, what are the differences or, or what would you say comparing Croatia with the Netherlands uh, in terms of doing business? Uh, what, what the Netherlands is known for is that it's simply a very competitive market. You know, there's a lot of very strong competitors out there in pretty much whatever you're deciding to do. Uh, those competitors, they, they very often, they have very deep pockets. They are at any given time able to outspend you. If you are like a startup within a, a particular industry, uh, well, if I look at Croatia, uh, but what I really enjoy about doing business in Croatia is that there's many fields or many areas where you can actually enjoy first mover advantage. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that are already being done in, for example, Western Europe that are not being done in Croatia yet, or that could significantly be improved in Croatia. And that's again, you know, as an entrepreneur, these are great opportunities uh, and, I'm, and I'm taking them, you know, I mean, I was one of the first companies in this country to open up a call center. And today that call center employs 8,000 people. I was one of the first companies or maybe the first one in Croatia to, to be focused on email marketing. While in, for example, countries like the Netherlands, this market is fully saturated. Uh, in Croatia, we were the first and now we are working for nearly 100 top companies. I mean, I'm talking about companies including Air Serbia, Croatia Airlines, Croatian Telecom, uh, big insurance companies, banks, uh, credit card processing companies, of course, all the way down to towards smaller companies too, because our product is for everybody. Um, but I don't think that we would have been able to accomplish that in a market as saturated as the Netherlands, for instance. Uh, now, of course, um, we have a possibility as a country to be a first mover when it comes to introducing a digital nomad visa. Uh, but that's on actually on a global scale, so that's even better. Uh, and, and actually, a couple of weeks ago, I, I started another business. It's called CROP, so C-R-O-P. And with CROP, what we intend to do is uh, to introduce Dutch agriculture technology to Croatia. So the reason why I wanted to do that is because I believe that Croatia is heavily underinvested when it comes to uh, agriculture technology. Uh, as you might know, Borna, in, in, in the past, Croatia was able to produce enough food to feed an entire region. And today we are not producing enough food to, to feed our own population, resulting in Croatia becoming an importing country for food, a food importing yep. country. And to me, uh, that's just utterly painful to, to, to even watch something like that. And uh, if you look at other countries like the Netherlands, where there's like 10,000 hectares of greenhouse, uh, you have countries like Italy with 30,000, more than 30,000 hectares of greenhouses. Uh, Turkey, the same thing. Spain has even more. I think Spain has like 55,000 hectares of greenhouse. In Croatia, we have approximately 50 hectares of greenhouse. So, you know, they haven't even started with, with, with this. And that's again where I wanted to be among the first ones to uh, to really... Uh, bring this Dutch technology to Croatia with the ultimate goal that first of all in Croatia we become less dependent on importing food, uh, perhaps also less dependent on tourism uh, and hopefully one day we will become again an exporting nation like it used to be in Croatia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that's a, something that Croatia seriously needs to work on. Um, I remember driving to Slavonia and seeing just fields and fields not being used. Um, for yeah. example, here in Ireland, you can't see that basically. Um, everything seems to be used up to its, uh, well, let's say maximum. Um, I believe that um, starting... Oh, but the Netherlands too. I mean, the Netherlands, yeah. every square meter is planned and used. And then, yeah. as you said, uh, if you're driving from, from Zagreb towards Belgrade and you're driving through Slavonia, then all you see is, is basically unused land. And uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's so much potential, so much to do with that land. And... Yeah, that's where we uh, that, that's where we see that 
that there are opportunities that mm -hmm. we want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I have a friend that um, last year when Croatia um, uh, passed the law of planting uh, hemp plants, uh, he decided to jump on the train and he had two fields. I think he bought one and just started um, planting those and kind of spreading the word about the culture. And um, he connected himself to local producers and they're doing their own products, selling them online and uh, businesses thriving. So uh, I believe it can be done. And I, I shared the, the, the idea there. I also believe it can be really easily implemented into Croatia's uh, booming tourism. Um, I heard of uh, tourism for like, I studied tourism. So I heard of a lot of strange shapes of tourism that people usually wouldn't think about. But when you take... Like what? Um, for instance, we live in small cities. Zagreb is a million people city, but it's small compared to New York or any of the cities in China, let's say. And people there have never actual, actually never seen a huge piece of green land, and it's so unnatural for them. So there are special types of tourism where you can actually go to a field or to a um, vineyard and just look at plants or uh, pick uh, fruit and a lot of people pay money to actually go into your field and help you <laughs> pick oranges or pick uh, apples and it's a great experience for them because they don't see it they're in glass yeah. and asphalt and cement and don't see nature and experience it for them it's a great great um experience you know and they want to see it um so i believe if we get our agriculture and tourism uh, combined we can get uh, specialized types of tourism like that started up yeah and it can be easily like that, that's at least not what i'm planning to do uh i'm i mean first of all we're talking about greenhouses where it would not even be allowed for for anybody that is not working in those greenhouses to enter i mean it's too dangerous that you might even bring in uh, certain diseases uh, yep. that could just kill your crops. And uh, so we are not planning on combining tourism with agriculture. I believe that there is plenty of tourism already in Croatia. I believe that there is not enough agriculture. So we're going to just be razor focused on, on, on mm -hmm. doing agriculture very well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so um, what would be the main technologies that you have in mind there? Um, you said greenhousing, would it be uh, lighting or heating or... Uh, I'm, I'm not very familiar with that. Uh... So, I mean, we're going to be using uh, hydroponics. So, uh, the, 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 actually, we're going to grow tomatoes, in case I didn't mention. Yeah, tomatoes. So, they're not, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny, you know. A lot of people, when, when I talk about starting with agriculture in Croatia, they go like, yeah, that's great, you know, because the, the, the soil in Croatia is really great for this. And then if I tell them, then when I tell them that we're not even going to use soil, that we're going to use hydroponics, which is basically like a rock wool where you're putting in your, your, your seeds. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a complete different technique. It's obviously, it's a Dutch technique. Uh, we're going to be um, using also light installation so that we are actually able to, to produce 12 months a year. Uh, the idea is also uh, to build the greenhouse right next to uh, an energy source. So that could be, for example, a biomass plant. Mm -hmm. So biomass plants, they are, when they're producing en uh, energy, they're producing heat. And their heat is a waste material for them. And we can use their waste material to warm up our greenhouses. Okay. So, you know, to use energy in the a, in a, in a most efficient way, uh, to do business in a sustainable way, uh, to produce biological food, eco products, uh, to follow uh, standards like uh, GAP, uh, good agricultural practice. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do it the right way. And, and, and I want that those tomatoes that we're going to be producing, that I can, without feeling any kind of weird about it, that I can give that to my own kids. Yeah. that my own children can can eat those products. Yeah, yeah, and feel safe about it. Awesome. Um, I'm working in business development right now, and I contact companies all over Europe, and I all the time stumble upon interesting projects there. And I see a um, movement of vertical farming. Um, have you considered that? Have you looked into that technology already? Or uh, we're going to be using uh, the, the latest techniques for, uh, for, for growing tomatoes, but that, that's not going to include vertical farming. Uh, I think that perhaps that's also being used more for, for different kinds of crops. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, cool. Uh, but it does seem like, uh, like from the promotional side, to do a really good job of having great pictures. Yeah, it's, about a, very how hot, doing it's it. a very hot topic right now. Uh, but you need to also understand that 
first of all, I have no agricultural background. So what we do is we are actually teaming up with our joint venture partners from the Netherlands who have more than 30 years of experience in delivering turnkey solutions for greenhouses and managing greenhouses. Um, we are, so when I say we, I'm talking about myself together with my business partner, Jerko Trogerlich. Uh, our background is actually PR and marketing. Uh, and, and, and we see an opportunity in Croatia to, to go and do this. But of course, we need to gather smart people around us that can help us bring this project to life. And, and uh, since, since we are not the people with agricultural background, we decided to team up with, with people that do have that in, join, in a joint venture. Mm -hmm. Sounds awesome. Um, and I believe that's, that's how it's supposed to be done, right? Getting the right people around you. Um, th that's one of the main things in leadership is actually getting people to do stuff that they haven't been doing yet. Um, tell me, I want to go back a little bit to your entrepreneurial journey there. Um, how was it for you to kind of push people into projects that they haven't been do doing, um, starting new things? And in general, like, um, what are your experiences with um, entrepreneurship? What, are, what is hard for you? Uh, what's and maybe easy for you that might be hard for some other people? Like, give us some insights there. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm motivating or pushing people into doing things that they have never done before. I'm, I'm mostly doing that towards myself. So without any agricultural background, I'm deciding to go into agriculture. But then I'm actually collecting people around me that have a good understanding and a long experience in, in working in that sector. So it's, it's not that I'm asking the people from Web Power Adria that are sending newsletters right now to go and grow tomatoes. That's not the plan. <laughs> but uh, all about creating. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about creating things. And, and for me, it's important that... Um, you know what, just, just to go back on one topic, and that is that um, in 2016, uh, when, I, when I sold my contact center, uh, at that time we had more than 400 people employed. Uh, I was 31 years old, and I've been working in the call center business my entire life, and, and, and then you start having all those questions for yourself. You know, what am I gonna do now? But one of the questions that I also asked myself is like, is this the biggest thing that I will ever be doing? that I've ever done. And, and am I gonna do something bigger in the future than, than building a company with 400 people and then to exit from that? And after talking also with my wife about that, uh, she got back to me by saying, you know, first of all, you need to define for yourself what it means to do something big. Uh, perhaps you can start a small company but have a very big impact on things. And, you know, Along the way, I started wondering more and I started asking myself the question, why am I doing what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. And at, at, at one point of time, I came to the conclusion that my why is that through my entrepreneurial efforts where I wish to crea create things and get people involved and, and, and enable people to develop themselves. Uh, but at the same time, I wanna start businesses that I believe can, can contribute to a better tomorrow for Croatia in this case then. So knowing that I'm married, a Croatian woman, knowing that my four kids are half Dutch, half Croatian, uh, knowing that my future will always be tied in with Croatia and that, my, that we plan to be here for much longer in Croatia. Uh, I think it's, 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 it's wonderful to be in a position actually where I can do what I love to do, which is to create things and to get people involved and and build beautiful things, but at the same time to have a positive impact on the country. And agriculture, this, this one with crop, what we are now planning on doing, what we're doing, uh, fits completely into that story. And uh, I mean, first of all, I'm very passionate about it myself, but I can also feel that pretty much the whole nation is passionate about it. You will not believe the response that we have gotten already. Mm -hmm. uh, it's being covered all over the media. Uh, this morning I had an interview with with a newspaper. I think today or tomorrow it's gonna to be in uh, uh, 24 Sata, one of the most uh, uh, read newspapers in Croatia. So it's getting a lot of attention also because I, th I think that I just, I'm, I'm not the only one that sees that this is something that we need in this country. Yeah. And that's why everybody's very passionate about it. And people in Croatia are very passionate about food in general. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, I usually cook for myself all the time. Um, Ireland 
doesn't have very spicy food or they don't make taste like when you first come here you notice that a lot of food is very um just like not salty like very plain you know and then mm -hmm. i bring my lunch to work and they always like get around my plate and like oh what's that you know so uh -huh. um it's, it's great to see some some of those differences um and i believe yes that uh, a lot of things should be actually improved like that um to presenting an idea and uh, like getting the idea of a positive impact to true to people um i feel like a lot of people see it but are not kind of prepared to do things around it you know they they see that uh, fields should be um, used up and that companies should be started and that the positive energy should be there um, what is your main take on that one because that's one of the things that i want to focus most with this podcast kind of getting positive ideas out there and getting more people to kind of uh, take their lives into their own hands and moving it into a um, better direction where they get more out of life and okay, I moved to Ireland, but I don't think that's the only thing that you can do. And my idea here is not to get to people to move out of Croatia, it's to gather knowledge and use that knowledge to get a better um, outcome. Because uh, b before you answer it, I'm sorry to make this a little bit uh, long-winded. Um, I... I'll just have another sip. Perfect. Uh, when I came here to Ireland, um, I visited one of their museums. It's called the Epic Museum in Dublin. And it's basically tells the uh, story of Ireland in the last 200 years. And if you look back for, uh, it's not even a hundred years, the country was basically poor. They didn't have anything, nothing was built. Like um, they, uh, their population left their country uh, so to the amount that only 25% of the population stayed and it was all their farmers and everything. And in a very, very short period of time, they managed to uh, create a huge turnaround uh, where they got some, some of the largest companies having their headquarters uh, in their country and having amazing results and their economy is brilliant. So I kind of want to, you know, like um, get a useful ideas that might also help Croatia uh, from the example of a country that's also around 4 million people and by the size it's also around here somewhere and also has strong tourism you know so i believe that there are a lot of concepts that can be taken and used uh in in our case in croatia um so let, let's get back to the question there like um how do you get people to actually use the knowledge that they got and start implementing it yeah um I mean, first of all, if you look at people in general, we, we, we are very prone to, to be complaining about things. Uh, and, and, and we like to, it's easier to point fingers and to blame somebody else for, for your current situation that you are in. And of course, I mean, in Croatia as well, there's, there's plenty of things that we can complain about and there's plenty of things that should be improved or be, do, be done completely different. Uh, but instead of just, sitting in a coffee bar with your friends and talk about it and complain about it all day, my attitude is to roll up my sleeves and to start making change myself, myself. Because I don't expect anybody else to change things for me. Nobody's gonna change anything for me in a positive way. Uh, there's no government in the world that is gonna provide you with a great life. And yeah, some governments, they are better organized and some countries are obviously richer and they, they provide better social security and these kind of things. Or, they provide better public services for, for the tax money that you're paying at the end of the day. And, you know, just to compare, uh, just to also look at the reasons why people in Croatia are, are massively leaving this country. We're talking about almost half a million people out of today, 4 million people. So there were 4.5 million people, I think, when I came to Croatia 14 years ago. Today, there's 4 million people left. Uh, the way I see it is, this is, ma this is mainly because of economic reasons. Uh, some people then are going to start arguing like, no, it's, it's far more than economic reasons. Uh, then I think by myself, if everybody would have had an income of like 2,000 euros a month here, would they still have left this country? I think not 500,000 people. Uh, but at the end of the day, what it comes down to is that in every country, we need to pay our contributions. We need to pay a certain amount of tax. But what we are looking at is, okay, just like when you're buying a product or a service, you want to know, okay, I'm paying a certain amount and then I'm getting, I'm getting something in return for that. In Croatia, that means you're paying a certain amount of tax, which is high, and then you expect a certain public service to be returned for you, to you for that money. 
And I just think that Croatia is losing it there in terms of not being competitive compared to other countries. In Ireland, you also pay a lot of tax. In the Netherlands, you also pay a lot of tax. In Germany, you pay a lot of tax. But the public service that is being offered for the amount of tax that you're paying is at such a higher standard than what is being delivered to you in Croatia. And that's why I think a lot of people would rather prefer to, to pay a high tax in the Netherlands than that they would pay a high tax in Croatia. Um, at the end of the day, uh, not in the Netherlands, not in any other country, not in Croatia as well, uh, the government is going to make such big moves that it's really going to improve your life. If you want to be able to, if you want to improve your own life, you're going to get up in the morning early, work hard for it, and, 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 and push for that change yourself. Yeah, I agree. I agree. The Uncle Gold Podcast. I also like working with entrepreneurs, you know, like I love their thinking style. And I think it's so cool that somebody just has an idea and then gathers people around them and moves into that direction. I think that's, that's a really cool thing. Um, it's really fascinating. But, but yeah. Let, let's get back into the, uh, okay. Podcast. Yeah. Are we going to count down again? No, no countdown. <laughs> no. Well, get right into it um so welcome back to the uncle gold podcast after this short break we're, thinking, we're continuing the conversation with jan um jan thank you again for being here um early on we touched on on mindset and kind of going in the direction of improving things in in your life and when i listen to you you sound very certain like you 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 know what you're thinking about you know what you're talking about you know where you're going what you're doing and i love that about people i feel that a lot of people are struggling with that and kind of don't know how to present themselves in a better, you know, picture or kind of like how to go for, for things in life. Do you have any recommendations or maybe tips for how to acquire certainty in life or confidence or, or how did you get it? Well, uh, I wouldn't say that, that uh, my main asset is, is, is to create certainty in life. I mean, nothing, nothing is certain in life, uh, also not in the life of, of entrepreneurs, whether you are successful or not. Uh, but things are always going with ups and downs. I mean, I've also had my ups and my downs. And uh, um, what, what, what I think is important is that for yourself, you just need to very strongly determine where is it that you want to go to? What is it that you want to do? And, 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 and maybe even more importantly, why do you want to do it? Because if, you're, if your why is not correct, uh, and if, if, if you're not correctly motivated, or if you are not passionate enough about what you, what you plan on doing, then it's gonna be very tempting to give up the moment that it gets difficult. Uh, and, and, and difficult times will for sure come. You know, there's gonna be definitely a lot of obstacles along the way, and then you need to actually be strong enough or believing strong enough in what you do to continue pushing through, uh, finding your way either over it or around it, uh, and, 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 you know, several times I've had businesses or I started businesses where I've dealt with situations where I thought, okay, you know, is this it? Is this the end? You know, I've been several times in situations where there was pretty much no money to pay salaries. And then you pour in all the money that you have to, to buy yourself another month. Uh, had I not done that, I would have been finished with my business and, and, but believing very much in what you do, um, uh, being razor focused on, on, on what the end goal should be helped me to get through these difficult situations. Yeah. Just don't give up. But I think it's, it's, that's general in life, not to give up, just to keep fighting for, for what you believe in. Yeah, that's so inspiring. I, I love messages like that. And I believe people should hear them more often. Uh, I keep filling my head with messages like that that I hear from other people that kind of have the same attitude. And still it happens that you like lose your focus or, or something hits you and you're like, whoa, where did this come from? You know? Um, and I believe it's um, very important to kind of know to pick yourself up after you get kind of knocked down. Um, I, I feel that vision really does help um even if you don't see the path and um putting pieces together is it's one of the f more fun things and um it, it's kind of like when you're confronted with a problem it seems 
that you kind of can't overcome it and don't see the solution there. But later when you look back at it, it, it kind of helps. It kind of helps to have problems and challenges in life uh, because it builds a lot more character. It builds your um, kind of the ability to think on your feet and um, try to find new solutions. And I think that's just a great thing to have. Just to tie in on that, uh, what I actually came to realize is that uh, I'm at my best as an entrepreneur when times are most difficult. Uh, in, in situations where your company is doing fine, uh, you've built up some financial reserves so that you can take a hit, uh, your business is growing very nicely, you're getting some new clients, everything is going well. Uh, people tend to become very lazy in those situations and it takes away your hunger to, to wanting to move forward faster, to, to progress and to continue building what you're doing. Uh, the moment that you actually become lazy and, 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 and you're not being razor sharp at that moment, that these are actually the most dangerous times for you as a business owner, because that means that uh, somebody else who is more hungry, your competitors, they might be cutting your leg while you don't even notice it. Uh, in, in times when it's most difficult, when most of your focus is required and, and, and you need to be more, more creative than you have ever been before, that's when I feel that something inside happens to me where I do become more creative and I come up with solutions more easily than, than in situations where everything is going smooth. And that's why I, I think that one of the most difficult things for me as an entrepreneur is that finding something that is going to make you feel hungry again. And in that case, you know, if you are becoming, for example, uh, a strong player in a certain market, in a certain country, if everything is going well, for me, that would mean that we need to look into expanding to other markets uh, just to get that hunger back in, in, for, for wanting to move forward. All right. So um, how about for someone just starting their journey from scratch who hasn't even like started their business or is just thinking about changing their life? Do you maybe have some tips for some as someone who started already a few businesses? For someone who's at, at zero point and is starting to start their journey, what would you say to them? What would be most useful for them on their journey? Uh, find yourself a very good mentor. Uh, and, and that's not only an advice that I would give to people that are starting out from the beginning. That's also something that I would advise anybody to do, you know, even for myself. You know, it's important that we have mentors. Uh, there's always somebody with more experience than you have. And there's always something that we can learn from other people. So to surround yourself with people, uh, and it doesn't have to be in the same industry as where you are. You know, sometimes we're also just talking about life experience, and we're talking about experience on, on how to deal with, with difficult situations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just very nice that if you're talking with somebody that is not familiar with your industry, how they can actually have a complete different view on your business than you have yourself. And sometimes that works very inspirational, very refreshing, and it will give you the insight that you need actually to, to continue from that point onwards. And so my advice would definitely be to anybody that wants to become an entrepreneur, start your own business, is surround yourself with other entrepreneurs or other people from which you believe that they can fulfill some kind of a mentor role mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I have a feeling that um, a lot of people might think that if they ask someone who's a experienced business owner who's running a company or maybe a few companies that they won't have time to share their knowledge with you or won't have time to deal with your problems, right? How does somebody approach that? Uh, I mean, obviously there's no website where you can just go and find yourself a mentor. Maybe that's something that we should start <laughs> where, where people that actually want to fulfill mentorship roles where they can sign up and make themselves available to people. I think there is. I, I actually think there is. I think it's called yeah, okay. mentorme.com. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Wonderful. Maybe I should go check it out then. Um, but um, no, I, I, I think that um, if, 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 if I look at entrepreneurs in general, one way that I would describe that group of people is that they are actually very passionate about helping other people. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, being an entrepreneur, your core business is to solve other people's problems. Yeah. And for solving that problem, you're charging money, either by delivering them a product or by offering them a service. Uh, but but it's, it's in our genes as entrepreneurs that we want to help and support other people. I'm being contacted quite often, I have to say, on, on, on people that are 
in search of something or in need of something or they just need to have a little push in their back to move on further and and, and i will give them as much time as i can possibly make myself yeah. available um i would definitely also recommend to to go to networking events uh and sometimes a mentor can also just be somebody that creates great content mm -hmm. you know i mean there's probably a lot of people that could see guys like gary v gary vaynerchuk yeah. to be somebody that they can learn from you know one thing that i learned from him is that it's really all about content creation and that's also why i got inspired also by people like him to start creating content on linkedin and and the amount of doors that it has opened me including the door to the prime minister's office on linkedin is, is just unbelievable for me a whole new world opened up because of linkedin and uh by by looking closely at what those kind of individuals are doing for themselves uh, and, and 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 turning that into your own way in your own style and applying it to your own business or to your own life uh that's also a way how you can how you can look at people like gary or other individuals as as a mentor uh, the best of course the easiest the nicest would be if you can actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations with mentors but I have a lot of friends myself that, that have their own businesses. You also, of course, get to know and get to meet other entrepreneurs once you start your own business. Hey, you as a business owner, you're contacting another business owner to see if there's any possibility for collaboration. And then, you know, after meeting with that person a couple of times, you actually find out that it's really nice to hang out with each other. You like what he is doing. He likes what you are doing. You're talking about it. All of a sudden, you're having a conversation. And... Is that then right away a mentor? No, it doesn't have to be, but there can definitely be things learned from each other. Mm -hmm. And the more people that you can gather around yourself from which you believe that you can learn from them, but they can also learn from you, just being very supportive to one another. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Uh, I see that a lot of people are now starting their journeys uh, and going online. We mentioned that earlier in the first part of the podcast, um, e-commerce has just shot through the roof I mean, everybody being at home uh, during the lockdown, um, shops were closed down. So everybody started ordering from Amazon, eBay, and all the other ones. Um, would you recommend people focusing more uh, of their businesses in e-commerce or just online in general? And what would be some of the ways that it would be uh, best about doing that? I mean, I think that in today's world, it's not an option anymore to to be, let's say, only an offline business. I think that any business, doesn't matter what kind of business you do, you need to have an online presence. Yeah. Uh, even if that means that uh, you are just focusing your online activities on creating content and getting people to, to learn about your company or, or, or to, to have a better understanding of actually what it is that you do for that you need to have an online presence. I mean, for whatever we are looking for in life, the starting point is we are searching for it online. If they cannot find you online, then uh, like you don't exist. I mean, your competitors are going to eat you alive, the yeah. ones that are online. So uh, it's no longer anymore a debate like, is it nice or good to be online? That question we should not even ask ourselves anymore. You need to be online. Mm, the only question yeah. is in, in which way. For example, I can tell that for my LinkedIn activities, I would be able to drive more traffic to my LinkedIn profile than I would be able to do to my website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Gary's right there where he says attention is what matters and there's a lot of eyes on LinkedIn right now. Um, yes. I, I use it every day for work and th the amount of contacts you, you get like and the easiness of like you, you can look up a company and find who the CEO is and basically contact him directly. It's just the uh, imagine like 20 years or, or let's go even further, like 40 years ago, like there's no Internet. Like how complicated is it to get to a CEO of a company? It's yeah. unimaginable. Um, so today we have things going a lot more faster. Um, let's stick to no, the you and I are you and I are having this podcast as a result of you and I connecting over LinkedIn. LinkedIn yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, let's stick there for a second because I, uh, for me, Gary is also a huge inspiration. Um, tell me a um, quick review of all the other social media. Like, do you use them? Uh, would you advise businesses uh, jumping on that board as well? Um, I mean, Gary uses everything. Uh, I don't think that all the social media are for all the businesses, but I believe that 
every business can invest a little bit into improving uh, themselves through at least one of them. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm for sure the biggest fan of LinkedIn. Then after that, I would say it's followed by YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, because I mean, I think that YouTube is, 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 is maybe over time even becoming uh, a better search engine, so to say, than Google. I mean, nowadays we want to consume all our uh, information online, preferably through video content. Yeah. It's only going to increase from this point onward. Um, then uh, I have to say that, that, of course, it depends on every, for every business it's different. But personally, uh, I'm becoming less and less of a fan of Facebook. Uh, I think that, um, first of all, right now on Facebook, it's, it's a much older generation out there than it used to start off with, of course. Uh, but I also somehow have a feeling that people on Facebook are more toxic than on LinkedIn. I think that on LinkedIn, for example, people are way more professional, yeah. obviously, because it's a professional network. Uh, and, and, you know, you can, you can make shady comments on LinkedIn, but it will be connected to your profile and it will be connected to your company that you are representing. So I think that people are in general being more human and more polite to one another than they would be on Facebook. Uh, and then, I mean, there's also a lot of businesses, of course, that for, for, for whom it is very important that you can show things in a great way visually. And I think that for those kind of businesses, Instagram is really great as a channel. Personally, however, I'm not using Instagram uh, simply because I don't feel that for myself, I have a need on, on, on being on Instagram. Uh, for me, everything happens on LinkedIn. For me, that's, that's sufficient. And if there's going to be something else coming out that, that has a strong focus on the business community, I would definitely be one of the first ones to try that. Uh, not expecting myself to start opening up a TikTok account. Uh, you know, Gary V, for example, he would be saying that there's a lot of attention right now on TikTok, so you need to be there. And maybe for certain businesses, that is true. But just for myself, I, I don't feel that. Mm, yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. Um, I, I love the passion that he brings and I, I admire how um, his, his style of communicating is so fluent and I think it comes with a lot of like talking to people. Um, I personally believe that it doesn't matter on which medium it is that communicating with as many people as you can is very important to raising your skills in general to another level because if you look at sales or marketing or all of that, it's basically sending a message across to another person. And uh, at one point in my life, I kind of figured that out because I was working in a hotel at the reception and um, the guys in the company that had the biggest salary were the guys in the sales department because they had a chance to impact the business, contact new businesses, create new business and um, all of that, right? So I decided to learn about it and um, go after improving my sales skills. And in the end, it's communication. And what Gary has is brilliant communication skills. Uh, I know that in business, it's, it's everything. Like if you don't do a presentation well, you lose a client, right? If you do it well, you gain a client. Um, do you I mean, have the some... way I look at it, uh, you, you can be super intelligent and you can know everything there is to know about a certain topic. But if you're not able to communicate that, then it's going to still put you in a very difficult position. You, you were saying, so if you can't communicate something, uh, it basically falls flat on the ground. Um, yeah. I'm telling you, Jan, uh, that, that's something we struggle with. Um, we work mostly with um, software developers and they're, they're extremely intelligent. They work with the most modern technologies. They develop websites, programs, apps. They're, they're the most sought after um, type of person you can find in the, in the recruiting market at the moment uh, because they have a really strong skill uh, that's needed by everyone, right? Especially now where everything is online. But their lack of communication skills is really, you know, something that holds them back. And a lot of them have a really like a strong record of not doing interviews well because they're not used to communicating with people. And then they're like the best programmer. They know all about technology. And then they go to an interview and then they're like, 
yes, no, yeah, you know, like very robotic, very like a machine. So uh, we put in a lot of effort to kind of prepare candidates for their interviews with uh, companies uh, where we tell them to, you know, like kind of go into a chat before going for an interview to kind of get into talking mode so they can relax and um, yeah. give them some questions that can help them. And I really see like having a better communication, how it impacts everything from like, relationships with your friends, family, um, random people that you meet. And of course, in business, there is just amplified to, to a, another level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, another big topic that's also a huge part of all of this happening uh, online and a part of the Uncle Gold podcast. Um, I know that money is a big part uh, in people's lives, uh, but a lot of people don't like to talk about it. Uh, I feel that it's kind of necessary in this business area to kind of go into it a little bit. Um, what's your kind of standpoint on, on money? What role does it play in your life and how did it affect maybe uh, your business? And um, in general, what are your topics on it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> obviously everybody needs money. Uh, but I actually, I would say that, that those individuals that are actually focusing on building companies, but not for the money, but for the sake of building companies, very often they end up with more money than anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if I look at the way I'm developing my businesses, especially in the beginning, I'm never focused on, on profits. Uh, first of all, I know that, that we need to invest in those businesses in order to get them to a certain point. Uh, but then again, you know, as soon as we start making any kind of profit, then very often I will find ways how we can already spend that profit in a way that we can, for example, hire great management, hire great staff, mm -hmm. uh, start developing new things. And for me, when, when I focus on, on, on building companies, I always focus on building value. Because for me as a business owner, the biggest value, the, the biggest money actually in your business comes from creating that value and then at one point be able to, to sell that business. That's when the most money is actually going to come your way. Not while running your business, not while having great profits from the business. Of course, again, you know, while you're working your business to, to, from point A to B, uh, you need to be able to make a living at one point from this business. But that's never the starting point. Yeah. 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 And we should be able to talk openly about money. Uh, it's very important. You know, some people would say money is, is the evil of all things. And uh, I, I was watching some, some content on YouTube the other day. Uh, and, it, and it was very interesting to see, actually. There was one guy who was mentioning that um, People who say things like, you know, money is evil or it's the root of all evil. Uh, um, these are also very often not the people that are able to attract money. Yeah. You need to be able to also have a love for money in order to, to be able to seduce it and to work with it and to do things with it. And then, and then it will come your way. Um, but at the same time, you know, having a lot of money doesn't have to make your life any better it will definitely make your life more expensive. You know, all of a sudden when you have more money, you start buying things or start getting staff like gardeners and all these kind of things, things that you would not have needed if you didn't have that much money. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my take on it. But we definitely need to educate uh, young people from from early onwards on, on, on how to work and deal with money. Mm, yep, I agree. Uh, there should be, um, uh, in my opinion, three courses that are kind of missing from schools. It's, um, one of them would be communication that we mentioned on earlier. I think that's important because everybody in schools just gives you like, learn this and then later on the, there's no follow-up um, and communicating with people in, in my opinion is on the first place. Uh, second would be um, something related to money, like how to manage it better and maybe even how to invest. Um, and third would have to be some kind of like um, planning or goal setting or something like that, you know, just so people kind of get more direction in life. Uh, that, mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. That's kind of lacking. Uh, and I see a lot of people get a lot of results focusing on these three things, you know, um, yeah, but I mean, luckily now there's, a, there's so much content available on YouTube, for example, on that topic, that if you want to know about it, then there's nothing stopping you from learning about it. Yeah, 
Exactly, exactly. And that's how a lot of people improve their lives. Uh, I know that a lot of people uh, invest a lot of time into getting their daily routines uh, up and going and kind of fixing that up so they can get uh, a lot better results and get more money, get better relationships and everything. Um, do you have like a daily routine that you stick to every day or something that you repeat constantly that kind of keeps you going in the right direction? Um, I mean... I, I we have, we have four children at home, so that's a lot of chaos already to begin with every start of the day. Uh, <laughs> but when when it comes to business, what 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 I like to do is at the beginning of the day I would really like to sit down for for a moment and to make my own to do list. Mm -hmm. So I, I I simply write down all the things that I want to do in that day, yeah. and then I just work my way down that list and and and, and try to do as much of that as possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome. But uh, it's it's um, it's very often also very dynamic, you know. Uh, things keep changing. Uh, all of a sudden, um, you need to have uh, certain meetings, or you know. So, it, but at least to have a goal for yourself at the beginning of the day and to make a to do list mm -hmm. to just really try to work down yourself down that list. That that's what I prefer to do always. Awesome. And uh, I write that all on paper. So mm -hmm. it's, I make a to-do list in um, on a laptop. I, I write down on paper what I what I want to do that day. Mm -hmm. Uh, me too. I also like to think on paper. I have notebooks all over the place, writing stuff down. Uh, and a friend of mine complains, like, why don't you just write everything down in your phone and have it with you all the time? And it's I don't know. It it has it has kind of a, a different feeling writing stuff on paper. Um, I also read an interesting article. I also that, like to scratch off things. You know, once you're finished yeah, with something, yeah. I also like to scratch it. Yeah, yes. that, that that gives you the feel good uh, feeling. But yes, um, I it's read my an, reward. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I read an article that says that actually there's a um, body mind connection where you actually uh, when you write stuff down it's retained more because your hand yes. made the movement of the same thought and focus I is that too. entirely there so it kind of retains longer um, so yeah I think uh, sticking to paper is a, is a good thing um, yeah all right. Um, any other tips that you could maybe give for people to kind of improve their lives, to raise it to another level? I, I know that we've been through uh, mindset and money and also the, the daily routine. Is there anything else that comes to your mind? Uh, yeah, like you said, I mean, we, we touched a lot of those uh, tips and subjects. Um, my advice would definitely be just really go into the action mode and mm -hmm. don't wait for anybody else to to do things for you. Uh, take your own initiative. Um, find something that you're really very passionate about. Truly believe in that. Try to find out what the end game should be and then just go and do it. Mm -hmm. uh, start walking that road and the road is going to be bumpy, but if you're passionate enough about where you want to go, then you will get to that point. And you really have to believe that. You have to have enough self-confidence that, 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 that you can believe in yourself enough that you will get to that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Awesome. Um, when, you, when you think forward like that, um, what are kind of your goals and ideas and plans and visions for the future? Uh, again, I know that we touched on some of them already at the start of the podcast with the companies that you're developing, but uh, give us kind of a, a rundown of the next few years if you, if you have it planned out that way. I mean, with, um, with my company, Web Power, uh, we plan to go to at least 500 clients in the upcoming year. Uh, meaning that we, we have a beautiful company which is performing very well financially, which would then also therefore be able to provide a very nice environment for people, which we already do. I mean, we are already providing a very nice environment, but uh, would really love to be in a position where that company can offer the best environment in, in for to work for, uh, in, in, for example, in our Zagreb office. Mm -hmm. uh, with Crop, very, very ambitious plan, but eventually over time to facilitate and to enable hundreds of millions of euros to be invested in uh, Croatia's agriculture sector and to, to play a significant role in turning Croatia again into an exporting country for agriculture. That will be the goal. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Um, 
Jan, uh, I got so much valuable info and input from you today. Uh, I, I feel like I've been to a, like a college class. Uh, my mind is racing right now. Um, tell me, uh, I always like to end uh, the podcast on some like motivational words and you've really given a lot already today. One more thing uh, before we go to the end part of the um, podcast, um, what, would some, what would be some of the books or YouTube channels or um, teachers online that you would recommend uh, that people go look into or, or stuff that might be useful in a, like a consumption way? Um, people very often ask me about which books do I read? Uh, my answer to that is I pretty much don't read any books, honestly. Um, I think that perhaps what we should be aiming for more often is that we are making our lives interesting enough so that you can start writing your own book about yourself, where every year should be a chapter of your own book. Uh, say, say yes more often to things and, 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 and be open-minded to, to what is in front of you it's going to make your life very interesting if, if, if you have that kind of a mindset and, and openness to, to, to things that are coming your way. Uh, whenever somebody asks me, do I want to be part of a podcast? Do I want to be part of a panel? Do I want to be part of presenting something? My answer is always yes. Why? Because it enables me to meet new people. It enables me to, to learn new things and, and to get different kind of perspectives on, 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 on the world. Um, other than that, I mean, Personally, I'm, I'm spending obviously a lot of time on LinkedIn. Uh, there's so much great content out there. Uh, YouTube, uh, spent a good amount of time there as well. Um, I, I don't think that I can really say like, hey, you should go and follow that person uh, because everybody has different kinds of interests. I think that you should just be looking for certain interesting topics that you would want to learn more about. Mm -hmm. And then along the way, you will very soon find out which are great content creators on that particular subject. Yeah. I agree. Awesome. Um, Jan, uh, I don't know what else to say. I think we covered the main things that a person would need to kind of uh, improve their life or at least start a journey. Uh, we've gone through a lot of these uh, mindset type of uh, thinking styles that you presented here. And you told us a, a lot about your company and your goals. And I wish you best of luck with that. I, I believe there's a lot of potential in what you're doing and that a lot of people will jump on the idea and, and, and follow what you're doing. Thank you so much, Borna. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, I wish you good luck with all the following podcasts. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, everybody, thank you for listening in. I hope you liked what uh, Jan presented today. Uh, leave us a comment below. We would really like to get some feedback from you guys. What did you like best? What part of the story was most interesting to you? Uh, go follow Jan on LinkedIn and definitely check out his companies. I'm sure we'll see a lot more from him in the future. Uh, Jan, thank you for being on the Uncle Gold podcast. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Have a great day. The Uncle Gold Podcast.